welcome Derek Lee and Cliff Prose. Listen, congratulations on the film. Thanks. Thank you. It's really, it's really good. It's really good. I'm, I watch a lot of scary films. Um, they're my, they're my zen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I watched this, and I was like, oh god. And it's scary, but it's, it's, it's got so many different things to it. I just wanted to know how. It's got to come from dark minds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Or no, what's right with you that, yeah. you, could, that you could go this place? I, I, I wonder if it's because Cliff and I basically grew up very comfortably Canadian and happy and pleasant that we were free to explore the darker elements of our mind. I think if maybe you're born into crazier hardships, say it's Somalia, where there's no government and stuff like that, like you're, you're asking, you just want to tell happy stories. But right. <laughs> yeah, it's like first world problems. We get to tell the darker, crazy stuff because that's what gets us up in the morning. Well, it's an interesting place to go because there's so many ways to scare people. It's a good business if that's what you want, because fear is one of those things that can kind of break down borders, right? Scary films, but to, I, uh, it's not a traditional scary film by any means. You've got this idea of found footage, um, but then there's a narrative to it. So w when you sat down and go, okay, we have this really scary idea. How can we shoot it? How can we get the money to make this? Who's going to pay for this? Was that all part of the story? Yeah, I mean, initially, about four years ago, we wanted to make our first feature film, and we had an idea for a script, but it was like this giant, multi-million dollar idea, and we're like, nobody knows who the hell we are, yes. so, and no one's gonna hand us millions and millions of dollars. So then we thought, okay, let's go back to the drawing board and think of an idea that we could do for amount of money we could raise ourselves. And that's when we got this idea for, basically for a supernatural documentary. Right. And uh, we don't want to give too much away, but... Right. We, that juxtaposition was something we got really excited about and we thought that's a vision that we can execute for a small amount of money and we're not compromising anything. It's a pillar of all good scary films. <laughs> um, having sex with somebody you don't know leads to some bad <laughs> sh**. True. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so was that important for you to, were you sitting there going, how can we make the transition happen or was it, Someone's gonna have sex with a hot girl that's gonna cause trouble. <laughs> like, how did that happen? Derek immediately wanted to write in the sex scene with a hot girl. Yeah. I have no idea why, um, but yeah. But my, in the end, but she's not just some random girl. She plays a really pivotal, it's a strong character, even in absence and absentia. I mean, again, without diving into the specifics, I think that was our nod to the classic roots of the supernatural story, was that there's always that mysterious stranger character, and it's in crossing paths with the unknown that the hero always gets drawn down in the dark path. The beginning of this film is two guys who go on a trip. And it's how, and it, take away the supernatural aspect of it. If one of your friends has an alcohol problem, a drug problem, a gambling problem, whatever, mm -hmm. you look at your friends and go, how do I handle my friend's demise? Mm -hmm. And that really played, a, played into this film, because I felt that. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's part of the morality tale. I think you mentioned it already. It's, it's, it's in Derek not recognizing what he's going through. It's in Cliff being a friend in face of obvious signs of danger. And it's what do you do in that situation? How do you react? Um, and a lot of it at the beginning, we felt it was really strong that, that it's a bunch of guys hanging out, going traveling. You would joke about it at first, no matter how serious, no matter how crazy, just like yeah. you'd make a joke, you're such an idiot, you know, whatever it is yeah. at the moment. And then it gets to the point where you've gone past that point of no return, and well, you guys have to go watch it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, I mean, what was the, the film festival experience like for you being at, at TIFF? Um, that was unbelievable because yeah. when we first initially um, set out to make this movie, we thought, oh, maybe it'll live on the web as a web series and, you know, maybe we'll get a sort of a viral following and then all of a sudden we're at one of the biggest film festivals in the world, you know, doing the red carpet thing at a party and like, there's Keanu Reeves. It's like, this is weird, but kind of <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was an unbelievable experience. And then sitting in the theater with a thousand people who've come to see your film and, uh, and the reaction was great. There was a oh, pretty cool... Yeah, like uh, a, a guy passed out, which luckily he was okay. That's like with a huge that's, thumbs up. That's like a badge of honor for any horror director. Right. You're like, oh, great, we actually caused, like, physical pain. Wait, that's not cool, yeah, exactly. not cool. Are we in a different stage of Canadian storytellers now? Do you see something happening here? I feel like as Canadian filmmakers, too, we're all trying to make really great films that we want to see. And uh, we are Canadian, so our films will always be Canadian, but they're not, they don't have to be... Uh, Traditional Canadian films, right. and uh, you well, know this movies isn't like it. this isn't a tr at absolutely. all. Absolutely, and I think even like our film, uh, films like Rhymes with Young Ghouls, which we also played at TIFF, which is an amazing movie. Barnaby um, was on our show. Yeah. I remember talking to him, thinking, "There's a." I felt like there's a wave happening here of Canadian directors, but there's an anger and a grit in <laughs> for sure that and didn't we, used to be. And we were talking to uh, we were talking to him at TIFF and just talking about like we love genre movies, and uh, you know maybe it's you know time for Canadian genre movies to shine. Matt Johnson and his group made that film, The Dirties, right? No one makes dark comedies at school shootings anymore. They don't do that right yep. we, and he we're talking a bit about that outside our con context when he was on our show he said this there's a real like 
like divide between like established older, I think Canadian filmmakers and producers and young people, especially in Toronto, who are making movies. Like they, they never the two shall meet. Right. Ever. Can you learn stuff from them? Can they learn stuff from you? Yeah, of course, of course. But I mean, we, the Canadian film system is heavily, heavily politicized in a way that um, the American film system isn't really. And uh, there are a lot of, not barriers, but things have been done a certain way for a long time. And for that to change, a lot of people have to die. I mean like of old age. I don't mean like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, Matt, Matt's laying it down though, right? He's like that, that, I mean, he's obviously, he can say that stuff because people will laugh. Yeah. But that there's been a big divide in this country and that in a way it might have held some Canadian filmmakers back. I feel like we've been really fortunate. Like we actually haven't run into, uh, I guess the old guard is what he's referring yeah. to, that have been a block for that. Um, we were a little bit surprised going to Telefilm with our project at the beginning that they were going to greenlight something as accessible, mainstream, and, as, and commercial as what we made. Uh, but to our delight, they were like, yeah, no problem, sounds good. And they gave us, they let us go off and spend yeah. money. So. Absolutely. And they were really excited about the, 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 the new ideas that we bring to the table and the, you know, this web element and all that kind of stuff. So. so when did you first think, okay, let's make films together? Huh. Very young. Yeah, we, uh, like, did you see something? Yes, we did. <laughs> we, uh, is there anyone here seen the movie Desperado? I know yeah, at least yeah. one person in the audience has. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, do we have a clip? We have a clip of Desperado, right? I told you already. Oh my God. My musician. This is my guitar. What is it? It's a guitar. <laughs> it's him. Hot dog. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Rodriguez, Cheech, that's, an, that's a great film. Yeah, oh, for yeah. Sure. we actually got to meet Robert Rodriguez at Fantastic Fest, and we totally nerded out on him, and we're like, dude, you're the reason why we make movies. And it wasn't El Mariachi, it was that. It was it's Desperado. And, right. the, and to his credit, rather than, like, because we were totally, like, fan nerding on him, and he turned around and said, actually, I said the same thing to John Carpenter, and we're like, that's we, all, like, man. We, yeah, when we were 16, we saw Desperado, then proceeded to see it another four times in yeah. theaters and basically thought, that looks like so much fun, that's what we need to do. Yeah. And so then we basically grabbed our parents' handicaps and started making really horrible home movie versions of that. I don't think they were horrible. The cleaners was epic. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. That's amazing. It's clean, boss. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I am just oh. a clean. Well, look at the hands with the guns. Yeah. Look at the hands with the cleaners. Ah! It's acid! <laughs> No, this is exactly why you will get more funding from <laughs> Telefilm. Just, just, just starting to like you, George. No. Just, just starting to like you. But here's the thing. Here, here's my thinking of this, and that as somebody who's, who's talked to filmmakers for a long time, this country is good at lots of things, but one thing we need to be better at is supporting our storytellers, because at the end of the day, the stories are the only things that people remember, and we are incredible in songwriting. We have great Canadians who make films all around the world, but for the longest time, we haven't had this gritty, younger voice, and not, there's nothing wrong with the older voice. Jesus, Norman Jewison's a god. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he's doing it right in the CFC. But what we have now is we need to tell our stories from a different point of view, and you guys are doing that. And when I watch Reflected, it, I, A, you couldn't tell it was on a, on a micro budget. You couldn't tell that it was Canadian, except for the Canadian shirts you're wearing, which are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, um, and, and, the, and, and the Vancouver, when they looked at your, your yeah. picture. Yeah. You couldn't tell it was, it was just a story told by really talented people and that, that will inspire other people to make films. You could help hire, get three or 400 other people jobs if they go into this film business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible accomplishment and it all started with some cleaners. It's true. That's all it started. <laughs> you know, that's all it was. So I think it's amazing yeah. what you pulled off, man. <laughs> <laughs> Although that is pretty funny. I, I, I don't know who gave you that clip. Yeah. But I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so when you look at what you wanna do next, do you already have a plan? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we're uh, we're writing our next feature film right now, um, where it's going to stay in the sort of the action, slightly horror vein too, yeah. like darker psychological. Uh, but found footage uh, wasn't like sort of our natural space to exist in as directors. Like this was, we learned how to do found footage on this project. It's yeah. very, very difficult to make it feel good, make it feel natural. We learned from all the greats like Paranormal and Blair Witch, um, and it's very limiting. 
and freeing at the same time, but that's done. Yeah. So we want to get back to Roots, get more cinematic. Well, congratulations. This is a really good film, man. People got to see it. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Afflicted. It's in select theaters around Canada today. So make your weekend plans. Derek Lane, come across. We'll be right back.